are they screwing with my head? Is it really tasty or is it just chemicals that make me think that? The Big Mac is an iconic burger. It has been around since 1967 and it deserves a special place in the history books. But we are going to make it cheaper and better. The key ingredient to a burger is beef. McDonald's uses a ground up beef from a milk cow. It's a sustainable and a cheap food source. I have selected the same ground beef with a 20% beef to fat ratio. This will keep the price low and still make for a tasty burger. Fast food restaurants need to deliver food at low cost, so having cheap meat available to them is key. But if you want to upgrade to a higher quality beef, you might want to look into a grain fat black Angus burger patty. Let's put together our burger patty. We're starting with a sheet of baking paper and we'll put on a handful of minced meat. Now we'll shape it with our hand until it forms a burger patty. I want to compress it as much as I can so I get a good structure. Unlike McDonald's, we are using coarse ground beef. Once our patties are formed, we're going to cut out the baking paper, then we'll sprinkle on a little bit of salt and some fresh ground black pepper. Now let's focus on the Big Mac sauce. I got this recipe straight from the executive chef of McDonald's, Dan Goutreau. For our sweet pickle radish, we're going to start by taking six sweet pickles, a little bit of pickle juice, a quarter cup of tiny pickled onions, and a couple of tablespoons of pickled carrots and cabbage. And then we'll finish it off with four tablespoons of sugar. Now we'll grind that up until we get a nice smooth consistency. And there we have it. This is our homemade pickled radish. The base of our Big Mac sauce is one cup of mayonnaise. Make sure you use a sweet kind of mayonnaise. A quarter cup sweet pickled radish, two tablespoons yellow mustard, one tablespoon white wine vinegar, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, and to finish it off, one teaspoon paprika powder. Now we'll mix that all up. Let's do a quick taste test. Mm -hmm. I fired up our Napoleon Prestige Pro 500 and set it on with two burners underneath a griddle plate. The best crust on a burger patty is always created by a full metal surface, like a griddle or a cast iron pan. The combination of instant heat and containment of the fat that renders down out of the burger patty will create a combination of a fry and a sear at the same time. Like McDonald's, we are toasting our bun dry. Getting that crisp on a bun will give it extra texture and a little bit of extra flavor. We shredded our lettuce, chopped up an onion and toasted our buns, so it's time to start grilling our burger patties. On a hot griddle, we put a little bit of oil and seared off our burgers. Of course, we grilled them on both sides, building up that nice crust. Now it's time to start building up that iconic McDonald's Big Mac. It starts with the heel, which is the bottom part of the bun. On goes our Big Mac sauce, a little bit of onion, lettuce, a slice of American cheese, beef, the club, this is the middle part of the sandwich, more sauce, onion, lettuce, pickles, beef, and finally the crown goes on. I always looked down on the McDonald's Big Mac burger, but when I started doing my proper research, I really came to the conclusion that it isn't such a bad burger and definitely not at the price point they're selling it at. In the Netherlands, you pay four euros 15 for a Big Mac. And let me tell you what we made it for. I calculated we came to one euro and 24 cents. So I'm pretty proud of that. Of course, no Wagyu beef, no expensive cheeses and no crazy stuff, but still a fantastic looking burger and a probably a good tasting one as well. To make sure that we get it right compared to the McDonald's Big Mac, we got a reference steak. Reference steak? <laughs> How do we get to 18? Did you buy milkshakes again, Morrison? All right, our Big Mac. This is our side-by-side -side comparison, and we can clearly see that um, it falls kind of 
bit short. I like the look of my Big Mac better. In all fairness, McDonald's does a good job, but hey, I think we win here. I think that's clear in the looks department, that is. Now we need to taste them and find out which one tastes better. Roll Tide. Reference burger, Big Mac. Uh, Why? You know, I always wonder, are they screwing with my head? Is it really tasty or is it just chemicals that make me think that? What always, always disappoints me a little bit is that the bun is always a little bit dry. In the Netherlands we have these nice airy fluffy buns. Our bakers are such fantastic bakers, they do such a great job. Most of the times you don't need to bake your own buns. It doesn't make any sense because they can do so much better of a job. It looks horrible. I think it's horrible. But there's something about it and I can't explain it. I just taste the sauce and that's it. It's seasoned well. Morrison is right, you know. Honestly, I don't know. It's probably the sauce, isn't it? There's nothing really exciting going on and still you keep on eating that thing. Mm. Let's try a homemade version. This looks way better. Oh! Oh yeah. Strange, this is curious. Right away you get the beef flavor. You're really close, Hul. This, this practically tastes like a Big Mac. The reason why I'm getting it now and not in the Big Mac burger is that in the Big Mac burger, it's compressed meat. There's something country about it. The structure is still there, so you're able to get that texture and also recognize that beef flavor. It feels like this is the real deal. This is like it didn't touch the factory. The lettuce is much more crispy on a homemade bun, so you get a good crunch. And overall, you taste the bread as well. There's more flavor to this fluffy bread that we get from the bakery. I love it. And yours is better, but the Big Mac does, does something in my brain, something funny, and I don't know what. The funny thing is, when I think about it, it tastes exactly like the Big Mac. The only difference is, the texture is so much different. The Big Mac screws with my head. Okay, I'll leave. This has all these different flavor profiles put together and separated and getting a different crunch and a different texture and a bite from the lettuce and a bite from the pickle that still has that crunch. And this is really good. And if you think about the price, and we made this for one euro and 24 cents. And at McDonald's, you pay four euros and 15 cents. I'll let you guys make up your own mind about that. Morrison, yeah. we need to make a couple more of these. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you're getting something out of it. And if you did, then leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. I want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons. You guys freaking rock. If you're not a Patreon or a YouTube member yet and you want to be, check out the links down below. Oh. Morrison, why did you kick the camera? I'm sorry, it's Focus, late, man. I'm tired. What I wanted to say is a big thanks to all of our patrons. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, eat smakelijk and... Keep on grilling. That's right. Eating burgers. Eating burgers. How did I get to the reference burger? Reference steak. I must have loved steaks so much. In Dutch we have a saying, what the mind is full of, the mouth uh, lo lopes over from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, does the, how do you say it in English then? When the mouth, with the head full of it, the mouth lopes over from it. Lo the, the overflows from it. It's too difficult. It's strange, isn't it? It's really weird. It's detection.